it's time for another project that scares me. Now, as you know, at the beginning of this year, I did a whole video about 12 different projects that I wanted to try this year because I had been putting them off for ages and ages in the hopes that my skills and knowledge would get better and that I would be able to do these amazing projects or fabrics justice. It's not quite gone according to plan. There have been some epic fails. <laughs> there have been some that have been postponed to next year because either I've run out of time or I haven't been able to do the undergarment to make the outer garments work or I have needed to push them to next year because I need to buy expensive fabric to do them justice and make them work. So I think after this project I will have ticked seven off of my list of 12 which I don't think is too bad. This time I'm going to be trying to work with the lovely lace that my mum bought me back from Saudi Arabia. She bought me three of these as a present one year. The one I'm going to work with today is this turquoise lace. It's absolutely beautiful and has a really pretty scallop detail with, I'm calling them eyelashes, at the edge. So I really want to make a feature out of this. The design of the lace does get sparser got this is what I've got left it does get sparser as you go further into the middle and it was a double-edged lace as well I did have two lengths of the border to play with which was absolutely great obviously this lace is see-through so I have chosen to use this almost my skin tone satin underneath of it so it's going to end up looking like this I've been christening this my nude illusion dress because the color of this hopefully will give the image that it's kind of a very floaty lightweight lacy dress over who knows what but obviously within the realms of decency because I do want to wear this thing out of the house. So with all of that said I need to pick a pattern and I had intended to use this Lakala pattern because I really thought that the neckline would show off the lace, the little cap sleeves would show off the lace, the skirt would be great for the lace and the midriff panel was something that I really really liked. I realised that I don't like pencil skirts on me. I made a sloper early this year, I've made a pencil skirted dress, I've not worn the dress and I've not worked with a sloper since. It's just not a style that I feel comfortable in. So I kind of went back to the drawing board and then I realised that I had the 5951 skirt which is very slim and elegant and, and a really nice length for me but still has the fullness that I like. So I was going to stick that onto the Lakala bodice but then I made a muslin and the muslin looked terrible. There were so many changes that needed to be made. Now for, to be fair to Lakala I did order this pattern six years ago and my body shape has changed. I fluctuated in weight and I don't think I told them that I have a lot longer torso so I had to do some alterations to the pattern to even make the muslin up and then I didn't like how the muslin came out. So I moved on and decided to use the butter 6380. There is a full review of this one up here. It is an out of print pattern but if you can find it I highly highly recommend it. The sleeves are very very tight as I say in the review but other than that the bodice is amazing and I just love how it looks. So once I've picked the bodice I decided that I was still going to use the little cap sleeves because as I mentioned the original pattern sleeves are very very tight and I actually don't like where they cut off on me either. I'm going to use the Lakala sleeves, the 6380 bodice and the 5951 skirt. So now that I've got all those worked out let's get started. So I have the skirt piece from the 6380 out. This is the back skirt piece. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Yeah, you can just about see that. This is the skirt from the 5951. Interestingly, the 5951 is actually not as full. Not by a lot, but there is a difference in fullness. But it is much longer than the 6380, so I'm going to use the 5951 because I really like the length of this one and I don't overly love how this skirt looks on me. And it could just be the length because, as I say, this one is fuller than this one. But yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this one. So I'm going to put this pattern piece away. So I have my bodice pieces here. So I've got my midriff pieces my back bodice piece and my front bodice piece the lakala 4451 sleeve or cap sleeve which i really like and then the little doodad that corrals the fullness of the neckline um, into the armhole so that the neckline kind of gathers up on itself which is this bit here and it 
goes between these two markings here. So it pulls that neckline in. So I don't need to do anything with any of the front pieces. These can all be cut as is. I've decided for this one I'm going to take out the centre back seam because I just think a side zipper, especially because I'm using the cap sleeve so that the sleeve doesn't go all the way to the underarm seam and because of the lace I just think it's going to give a nicer finish across the back for the lace. All I need to do for that is mark in the seam allowance which is 5 eighths of an inch. So this one it's pretty easy because that's actually a straight line. So I'm just going to put that straight line on the fold of my fabric and cut it out. This one is actually actually some shaping down at the bottom there. So what I'm going to do is actually draw a line at half an inch. No, I'm not. I'm going to do the line at five eighths of an inch like the other one. This dress does fit me well and it is actually there is a little bit of room around the waist so that extra quarter of an inch which will be a half inch over the entire dress if i'm worried about that being a problem i can just sew this side of the seam with a slightly smaller seam allowance so kind of move that shaping there over into this piece and i can do that in production as it were i don't need to amend the pattern so i'm just going to cut both of these pieces on the fold so that there is no center back seam so now that i've got my pattern figured out i need to cut out my fabric i'm going to cut out the lining fabric first or the interlining fabric first so that i can lay it out on my lace as a full piece and hopefully do the best <laughs> most e economical use of the lace and the scallop of the lace for the dress that I want to achieve. So that's the next thing that I need to try and get done. Wish me luck. First things first, with all fabric, you want to iron it before you use it. And then you need to get it lying so that it's nice and flat and on grain. I'm really lucky. I have a huge cutting out table, so this is relatively easy. Once I've got the fabric on grain, I start putting my pattern pieces on. Most of these are going to be cut on the fold because I am eliminating the back zip and putting in a side zip. I also don't have to worry about the direction of the print because this is a plain fabric, which is quite a novelty for me. The reason I cut the interlining out first was so that I could use it as a full pattern piece and make sure that I was positioning the lace in the best way possible. I really like how the motif placement came out on the back so I'm really glad that I did this extra step. For the front bodice pieces I wanted to make sure that the scallop was going to overhang the finished edge of the interlining layer and the lining layer so I drew in the seam allowance along the long edge of the front and lined that up with the scallops in a way that would give me the over the hang that I liked and started pinning everything out but then I realized I needed to draw the seam allowance in at the center front seam as well so that I could make sure that the bottom of the scallop was matching up at the very center front point so that's why I unpinned everything and repinned everything so that the lace scallops would meet at a perfect point at the center of the bodice definitely worth the extra effort this took after I had the first piece cut out, I could then use it as my second pattern piece to make sure that I was getting exactly the same motifs in the same place and that I would have a mirror image for the front of the bodice. Well, that took a decent amount of time, but I really like how they've turned out. I do think I'm going to need to tack this to the end of the sleeve but I'm going to wait till it's actually attached to the garment before I do that and I will probably need to do the same for the neckline as well. I thought I'd start with the easiest pieces. I'm not at all sure how the skirt is going to go. I've cut out rectangles and I'm hoping for the best. I'm thinking I'm going to pleat the waistline of the rectangles. I think it's going to look nice but um we shall see. Next thing I'm going to get done is the little tabs. Then I'm going to start working on the front bodice pieces and see if I can make those work in the way that I think I can. It's going to be interesting. Let's give this a try. To achieve the finish that I wanted for the neck edge of the bodice, I, I wanted to have the lace hanging free and not be secured. So I needed to finish off the seam edge or the front edge of the interlining and the lining. So I marked in the seam allowances and sewed them together at 5 eighths of an inch, stopping at the pivot point of the center front bodice. I will have put up an illustration here, I hope. Once I had got them sewn together, I pressed all the seam allowance so that it was into the lining. I understitched it again, 
making sure to not go past the seam allowance points that I'd marked earlier. Press that again and then I can start mounting the lace onto the interlining. So for this I did make sure to keep the lining layer out of the way. I basted around all of the edges except for the neckline that I had just finished to make sure that everything was lying nice and flatly and securely and together so I could then treat the interlining and the lace as one piece. Once that was done I could then continue to construct the bodice as normal. Definitely not perfect and I do think I'm going to I think I think I'm gonna take off the eyelashes. I'm definitely taking off like these sort of like little extra pieces here so that the eyelashes I, I'm gonna call them that because I've heard it called them I heard them called that. Yeah, so I'll take I'll take these bits of like extra mesh off. But my plan worked. I have caught a tiny little bit of one of the pieces in my lining, but it is going to be very easy to just sort of like pull that out carefully. I'm going to go and press this open and then I can attach this to the midriff piece and then I need to start working on the back pieces. That's the plan. After getting the two front bodice pieces finished in the way that I did, the rest of the construction was much easier. I could mount the lace to the interlining pieces and then treat them as one. So I did that for the front midriff piece and sewed it to the upper bodice pieces. Then I did exactly the same with the back. I mounted the lace to the interlining for the upper back and the lower back. For the upper back I did pin and sew within the darts before sewing the actual darts just to make sure that the fabric got caught up in the same way and nothing bubbled or looked distorted once the darts had been sewn. So the back is done. I am so glad that I took out the centre back seam trying to match up this lace or put the motifs in such a way that they wouldn't have interfered with the centre back zipper was just not going to be in a fun time. So now I've got to attach the shoulder seams of the outer to the shoulder seams of the outer of the front and the same for the lining and then finish the back neckline and then I will need to burrito the armhole, no sew the sleeves in then burrito the armholes to get everything finished. We can do it. I did indeed do it. So the first thing was to sew the shoulder seams, then put the little cap sleeves on. Then I had to put in the little doodads that corral the fullness at the neckline. They were a little bit head scratchy. I ended up sewing them in just on one side. Then I burritoed the armholes, leaving a gap where the little tie doodad thing was meant to go through. Turned everything through. Then I th thread the other side of the tie through that hole that I'd left so that I could stitch it down by machine and make sure that everything was exactly where I wanted it to be. I would have just sewn it into the armhole as usual but because there is no centre front or centre back seam I have to burrito this, the armholes rather than just bag them out so there is a slightly different technique to that and there is a mini tutorial for that coming very soon. And just like that the bodice is done. I had a few kind of like head scratchy moments when I was working out how to put these in so that I could then then bag out the armhole at the same time but it I, I managed to do it and it worked. I'm actually not sure that I'm gonna cut the little lashes off of this. I was going to. I'll have to wear it or, or try it on and see if they itch and irritate because if they do they're gonna go. But yeah I'm pretty happy with that and then I'm really glad that I decided to not try and put a centre back seam in this because putting a zip into that would not be fun. So that is the bodice done and it fits really nicely. I have just tried it on over my t-shirt though so you know like and obviously without a zip in it that but so far so good it fits nicely and I know I mean I know this pattern fits me well so I'm I'm kind of like just assuming that this is gonna this is gonna work. I still haven't tacked down the lace to the front edge. I probably will go and do that but I'm probably gonna leave that till the end. I will also probably go in and just tack the kind of like overlay to the seam as well. Now I've just got to work on the skirt and I am going to put together the lining or the interlining piece, this, the, the, the nude coloured satin, I'm going to put that together and then try and work out how I want to treat the overlay because I really do want the eyelash lace on the edge of the overlay which I think means that I will have to pleat the waistband in. I'm not sure how that's going to look with that many 
pieces of the lace overlapping each other over the nude illusion if it was over the kind of like a turquoisey silk then it would look fine but because this is all gathered and this is this is actually looking quite dense where this is looking quite sparse it might balance out it might work but i'm going to try box pleating it but i need to make the nude illusion skirt piece first so that i can try box pleating onto that so that's the next step i didn't have enough of the cream acetate lining to make the skirt so i've done it out of the kind of ivory that i have and as you won't see it that's not the end of the world so i've made up the skirt of the satin i've made up skirt of the lining i'm going to attach the lining now then i need to put the two panels of the turquoise lace together and start working out how i'm going to attach it to the skirt outer wish me luck the skirt overlay was the piece that I was the most unsure about. I knew I wanted the scallops at the bottom, which meant I had to cut rectangles. So I cut two of those and French seamed them together. And actually the fabric was pretty okay to sew. Then I had to get it looking good over the shaped panels of the interlining and I <laughs> started out by trying to pleat it to the interlining so I marked the center points of the lace I marked the center points of the interlining panels and started trying to just freehand pleat it down if it had looked good I would have gone into a little bit more kind of detail to make it very very even but the main body of the lace is a very open weave so my pins were just not sticking in this lace and the double or triple layers of the lace at the waist were starting to look a little bit dense to my eye so I decided to scrap the pleating idea and just gather the whole thing. Once I got the gathering into the lace overlay I needed to attach it to the satin underlining so I pinned the edges of the lace to the edges of the skirt I pinned the side seams together and then pulled the gathering threads to evenly distribute the gathering across the front and the back I didn't want to catch the lace in the side seam where the zip goes in so I folded back the raw edge of the lace twice to match up with the seam allowance of 5 8 of an inch on the skirt interlining this meant that the entire free edge of the lace was still unsewn still flapping free it meant that it would need to be finished off later once the zip had gone in and the side seam of the skirt had been finished but that the lace overlay wouldn't be caught in that seam at any point which would allow the lace over skirt to flow freely at least that was my theory now it was time for the zip and I was really worried about how this invisible zip was going to go in to the lace and the underlay but it actually went incredibly well and I had no problems whatsoever which is always really nice when it comes to putting in zips after a very quick try on I decided that I liked how the dress looked and it didn't need any alterations so I could sew up the side seam below the zip of the interlining I keep calling it underlay interlining then I needed to French seam the rest of the lace overlay together I did this leaving about four or five inches free at the top which I haven't finished in any way at all I was going to sew them down to themselves but honestly I don't think you can see the gap in the twirls you really have to be looking for it to actually see that the lace isn't finished or attached in any way at the top of the skirt on the side seam so with all that done it's time for the reveal I absolutely love how this dress has turned out. I love this neckline. I think that the midriff panel is interesting. I'm not sure if I went down the right route by making it as sparse of the embroidery motifs as I did. I do think a belt will help but I have a very specific type of belt in mind. I do have this black belt which is exactly what I'm thinking it's jeweled at the front it's very blingy it's kind of gonna go in very well with the theme it's just the wrong color I need it in a, like a turquoise color now I can totally make one of these and I will probably try and do that I do have quite a few turquoise gems I might need to try and maybe find some slightly different colored ones but I do think something like this black belt is a good idea but the dress by itself 
stuff I actually do really like. Maybe I should have gone for a denser part of the lace which was found around the scalloped edge but I was really trying to preserve that and use everything that I had because I did only have three meters of this lace. I have nowhere to wear this at all. I don't know when I'm going to wear this but I'm really pleased that I've made it up. I have a couple of evening dresses in this particular bodice, my red silk one and this one now, and I'm not rolling out doing more because as I said at the beginning of the video I do have two other laces that mum got me at the same time as she bought me this one. One black and one navy which are both beautiful, both have way more detailing and beading on them which is why I started with this one. I am over the moon that I finally plucked up the courage to work on this dress. I'm also over the moon that I waited until this point because I do think this is the best combination for the bodice and the edging of the lace. This part was really interesting to work out how to do it because I knew that I needed to finish off this neckline before I could attach the lace so the construction method was quite interesting for this dress. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching me figure it out and put it together. I will definitely make more of this particular pattern but I'm not 100% sure if I will be using this exact pattern for the next laces, especially the black one. Although it is quite an open neckline and away from my face and with some nice gold jewellery it could work really well but black as you guys know is definitely not one of my colours and not something that I feel super super comfortable in but I do think over this nude illusion satin it's going to look really really good. All in all I am super super happy with this dress. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I will wear it at some point. It won't be something that frequently gets worn but then how many dresses are things that get worn frequently because for me not so much but I mean mate I it used to be. I used to have a very exciting life. I used to go to charity black tie events all the time and this would have been perfect for that but currently not quite so many evening black tie events that are on my calendar but you never know and it will be very nice to have one in the wardrobe to choose from. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you think of the midriff section? What do you think of the belt? Should I try and make myself my own jeweled belt? Should I leave it as is? Should I try something different? I'm not ruling out one of those rose gold solid metal belts that could look really cool as well. So yes, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this one here.